Hey guys, welcome again to the Hockey Bar. This is the 1st of February. New month, new everything. Not really. But it is Friday, so that's always nice. Fridays are always great. And we can get some stuff. There's a lot of news today, so let's get right into it, shall we? So, first off, um, the Red Wings are retiring number four in honor of Red Kelly. Red Kelly was a player for the Red Wings in the late 40s until, I believe, 60s actually and he was eventually traded to the Maple Leafs uh, and he ended his career there. Funny thing is that he's actually was when he was a player and still is a member of uh, Parliament in, in Canada. So it was funny he would always go uh, from Ottawa and then into Toronto to play while he was still in his career. So he's also so he's a politician and he's also a hockey player. Uh, so the Maple Leafs actually retired his number on or in 2016, and the Red Wings are now getting around to retiring him. He was one of the great players that helped the Red Wings get many of the Stanley Cup victories in the 40s and 50s. So he's being honored tonight, and what else would be appropriate than to retire it uh, when the Maple Leafs come to town to Detroit? So they're doing that tonight. It's going to be at 7 o'clock Eastern. I believe it's going to be nationally broadcast on Sportsnet, obviously, in Canada. And then if you're obviously local, uh, is there too. Um, NBC might have it too. I'm not too sure. So don't quote me on that. Look at your listings if you want to see it. I'm sure it'll be on YouTube later. But it's always such a nice event because it's all formal, and it really means a lot to a lot of players when they get their number retired. It's obviously like the highest honor next to being a Hall of Famer uh, that you can get in the NHL. So it's super important, and uh, obviously a huge congrats to Red Kelly. And then next uh, big news was that the Panthers and Penguins made a four-player trade uh, this afternoon. So that sends Derek Broussard and Riley Sheehan from the Penguins. They're going to play for the Panthers now. They got traded. And Nick Bukestad and Jared McCann from the Panthers are playing for Pittsburgh now. So four players moving around, uh, two and two each. So let's see how that shakes up the lines. Uh, I know Pittsburgh's got a pretty solid line. I think both Shea and Broussard were kind of third or fourth liners. So they can probably shake up the lines because they've been kind of different. Every single line has had something different going on. They've all contributed differently for P Pittsburgh. And uh, obviously Florida's uh, still near the cellar. So they're probably looking to shake things up too. And uh, I thought this was really cool too is that the Stadium Series game that's going on later this month uh, from, I don't remember the arena name, I'm sorry. Uh, it's going to be played at where the NFL Philadelphia Eagles play. Uh, so it's a football stadium, and the Penguins and Flyers are going to rekindle the rivalry they've had for years, being the two teams in Pennsylvania. So that's going to be a fun event, I'm sure. And the jerseys look really cool. I like I like the way they're done, where it's uh, two colors only. So, Flyers obviously have black and orange, and then the Penguins have yellow and black. So, I always think that's really cool when they do things like that. Uh, the color scheme is really cool. There's a couple pictures of uh, Claude Giroux and Sidney Crosby. I used to go check them out online. Probably find it anywhere, honestly. These look really cool, and I'm looking forward to the game. Uh, I think it's two or three weekends from now. So. And then also, in injury news, David Perron of the Blues is not injured right now. He was put on uh, the reserve today. And he's, he's missed three games in a row now, which is kind of, I think I'm a little worried now because uh, the Blues have been rocking pretty hard, and they were doing really good uh, recently. And most of it was because of David Perron. I think he had like six or seven goals and ten assists within like eight games. So he was rocking. Uh, the Blues were on a couple of winning streaks right before the break so hopefully that doesn't stop the momentum for them because uh, I know Perron was a huge uh, contributor to that and then lastly in the news kind of kind of a sad topic but it happens every so often in the NHL uh, Antoine Vermette a veteran player in the NHL he played 14 seasons in the NHL I think he played for if I remember he played for the Senators uh, the Coyotes Blackhawks and Ducks I feel like I'm missing one if I am I apologize so he's had a lengthy career, and he's been a lot of places. Uh, he actually got, at least he did get a Stanley Cup in his career. He got it uh, in 2015 with the Blackhawks the last time they won it. So he's got that under his belt. Uh, he was a free agent this year, 
played for the Ducks the year before this, and he's now going to retire peacefully um, from the NHL. So, great career. Uh, I think he was kind of an underrated player, in my opinion. He didn't have the greatest stats in the world not by any means, but he was definitely out there all the time, and he was a positive player, I think, on a lot of the teams he played for, if I remember watching him. Not too much, though. He always played in the Western Conference. I live in the East, so I don't get to see him come to town a lot. But I remember seeing him a couple times, and I always thought he was really good. Now moving on uh, to our games to watch. Two this time. Because hmm. the breaks looks like it's finally over, uh, for the most part. There's a lot of games going on. So first is the Flames and the Capitals. So the Flames, I think, are second or third best in the league uh, now. Obviously, they're one of the better teams in the league. They've got a lot of elite scorers. Uh, they really lead the plus-minus category, which I've talked about the last few days. Uh, so they're they're always scoring goals, so they're good to keep the score up on any game. It doesn't matter their opponent, uh, which is good because the Capitals lately, it seems like they've been struggling. Uh, before break and even coming after break, they've played one game. Didn't go their way. Uh, that, I think it was like three or four games before that. Uh, before break, they lost in a row. I think it's five, actually. So, not a good time. Um, and Ovechkin, uh, it's funny, he held a team meeting just to try and figure it out. Um, so, Holpe also, uh, he played at the Ulster game. He didn't didn't play amazing, but he definitely got the job done for the Metro. Uh, you know, they won it all. So, obviously, it's very good for them. Uh, Capitals hopefully can get it started. They've had a couple line changes just to try and shake things up. Uh, and the Capitals, or I mean, sorry, the Flames obviously have a game plan and they're sticking to it. Uh, they got a lot of guys, uh, Monaghan, Lindholm, Gaudreau, Giordano, tons of guys who can score. And they're very happy to use them, obviously, uh, to score all those goals they do. Because I think they are the highest scoring team in the league now. Uh, so... Might see that, I don't know, because goaltending for uh, Washington is always pretty pretty good. And then our second game to watch, as we already kind of talked about, is um, the Maple Leafs and Red Wings. So it is Red Kelly Day, so I felt it was appropriate to include them. You know, the big ceremony going on. It's going to be really cool. It's going to be a good atmosphere in the building in Detroit. And I honestly think it's going to be a good game. It's weird because the Maple Leafs are one of the best in the league, and the Red Wings are not. So it's a weird disparity, but for some reason I don't know if it's a, I don't know if this is uh, superstition talking, but the Maple Leafs and Red Wings obviously being original six rivals. I don't know if it's a thing that for some reason those games are just adrenaline rushing because they're so close and they're so intense the entire way. It's like I think the Red Wings have won one out of the three games they played so far. This is the last time these teams are meeting the season because uh, they're divisional play four times. That's how divisional is set up. So this is the last time they're playing. I'm sure the Red Wings want to get even. But every single game has been close. And usually it ends up being being so close because the Maple Leafs get a comeback, as they're really good at doing as their third period is really strong. So the Red Wings need to watch out for that. The Red Wings are coming off a break. Maple Leafs, I think, have played one or two games since break. So they need to get it, uh, get it started quick. And I'm sure the atmosphere is going to be great for both teams, considering... Uh, both teams have now honored Red Kelly as a player, and they can celebrate. So now moving on to stats, we still haven't seen any changes. Kucherov for the Lightning still in the first in the league. He has 79 points and 57 assists by himself. And Ovechkin is at 37 goals, still leading by a couple. And Mark Giordano, as we already talked about with Calgary, the plus-minus situation is very big. Uh, he's a very big contributor to that, leading with a plus-29. And then goals against average, still led by Robin Leonard. And save percentage led by him, too. He has a 202 goals against average, which has no sign of getting lower. But anything can happen. And obviously save percentage, which could get even higher as we go. And lastly, uh, to top it off, Marc-Andre Fleury of Vegas, obviously. Rocking 27 wins, 6 shutouts on the season. Impressive. Especially this midpoint in the season that's almost, almost more than half of the games. Probably is more than half of the games he's played because Subban's gotten a lot of starts this season compared to last. So he's definitely stepping up, being that premier goalie we all know. So I want to thank you guys for tuning in again. Uh, happy Friday, everyone. Hope it was a good episode. If, you, if you'd like to give us uh, feedback, it would be greatly appreciated. And if you're new, do make sure you hit the subscribe button to not miss any new updates on the show. Post daily. 
so you can go and watch anytime you want, get caught up, and keep an eye out for new episodes. So again, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.